Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. It seems like uh, summer has gone by very quickly, uh, but as I thought about it being the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, we are only halfway through the season of ordinary time. So we've got a number of weeks to go in the season of ordinary time, our green season in which we explore uh, issues of discipleship and what it is to be growing in grace and growing in Christ. Our lessons for today echo with themes of worship, we, we, with themes of welcome. We celebrate God's welcome to us and we extend that welcome to one another. So I uh, again welcome you to our worship time, welcome to visitors, and welcome to those who are online with us this morning. As our opening hymn says, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. I have uh, something that I found on my desk when I returned from vacation yesterday, and it is the sign that will be placed in the memorial garden um, signifying the, the ground there as holy um, memorial garden established in 2021 here at Zion. So uh, hopefully we can get that plaque put up sometime in the coming weeks and um, actually finally do a dedication for that memorial garden. A word of thanks for those who have been signing up the uh, two particular sign-up sheets that we have. Uh, we are looking forward to celebrating our 250th anniversary with a fellowship dinner on September 18th here in this place. And if you have not yet signed up, please do so. The deadline for this anniversary meal is next week. Um, I just had word that there might be a menu change due to um, increase in costs for food, so we'll announce that next week, but uh, do sign up. Um, we look forward to a fine evening together and looking back at some pictures and who we have been and who God is calling us to be as Zion Lutheran Church in Mannheim. And thanks to those who have already signed up for the pictorial directory, there will be uh, the sign-up table set up again after worship this week and next week, I don't know, <laughs> next week, okay. Uh, so we are encouraging everyone, we have not done a pictorial directory in a very long time, since 2015, uh, so we need to do some updating and uh, need you to sign up uh, for the pictures to be taken on September 27th. And final words of thanks to those who have supported the in-gathering for the Mannheim Food Pantry, of paper products, as well as everyone who has worked together to make our summer lunch program a possibility. We will celebrate uh, our final summer lunch distribution this coming Wednesday. If you haven't been here when we do that distribution, come on by, see what it's like, uh, but don't be late because it goes very quickly <laughs> between 11.50 and 12.15. We, uh, we give thanks for the ministry that is possible here at this church and for your generous support. Our worship this morning begins with the order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, taking a moment for silent self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is taken from Proverbs 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to, put, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 112 responsively. 
Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established the until they They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Second reading is taken from Hebrews 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to, to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. 
and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited to enjoy a picnic lunch and fellowship with a family originally from South Sudan, now newly arrived in the U.S. and being resettled as refugees by Lutherans and others in Lancaster County. Going to the picnic was an experience of coming full circle for me. It gave me a chance to extend greetings and prayers of blessing to strangers new to America, just as I had been welcomed and blessed as a stranger when I moved to Sudan 30 years ago. It was fun during the picnic to hear Sudanese Arabic spoken again, to recognize words I have long forgotten and to remember the sights and sounds and tastes of a very different place. I especially remembered one of the first words I ever learned in Sudan. Itfaddal. It's a great word, itfaddal. And I learned its meaning in this way. Shortly after I arrived in Sudan, I was walking down a dusty street one day a stranger in a strange new land. I didn't speak the language. I was mostly intent on trying not to get lost. As I was walking along, a young Sudanese woman came around the corner in front of me, and she stopped in front of her house. When I walked by, she greeted me with a huge smile on her face, and she said to me, Itfaddal. Then she said some other words in Arabic and beckoned me insistently into her house. And I began to learn that this is how things worked in Sudan, that I would be invited in for rest and refreshment because I was a stranger. I was rather taken aback to be welcomed in off the street like that, and it came to my mind that I wasn't in America anymore. Itfaddal, this woman said. And I heard this word over and over again in the months and years I lived in Sudan. I would find myself invited into the homes of people I had never met, and we would sit and chat, and suddenly tea and something to eat would appear at the table, and the host would say, Itfaddal. In the mornings, as I would walk to my office, my colleagues would be gathered on the sidewalk outside and they would say, Itfaddal shy. And they would insist on buying me a cup of hot, sweet tea. I drank a lot of hot tea on the sidewalk in Sudan while the sun beat down and the temperatures soared well above 100 degrees. And sometimes at night in Khartoum, when it was cooler, probably in the low 90s, I would be returning home from somewhere and my neighbors would call out to me, Itfaddal, come into our home, sit with us for a while, have dinner with us. I heard the same word in the refugee camps where I worked. Camps filled with families living in cardboard and bamboo huts. Camps filled with people who had been forced to flee their homes by war and famine. Camps filled with people who would insist on offering me a place to sit in the shade, and if nothing else, would bring me a glass of water. It fuddle, they would say. It fuddle. I have forgotten most of the Arabic that I learned in Sudan, but I have not forgotten it fuddle. The English language does not have a word equivalent, but generally, Itfaddal means you are welcome. It means you are my honored guest. It means welcome, be at home. Enjoy the grace of hospitality. Itfaddal. This word, itfaddal, brings Hebrews 13, verse 2 to life. 
Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for some have thereby entertained angels without knowing it. The Sudanese I met did not neglect to show hospitality. It fuddle, they would say. You are a stranger, but we welcome you. It fuddle, the Sudanese said. And they showed me abundance and grace in sharing. And they gave me a glimpse of God with us in the breaking of bread, in the drinking of tea. There I was, a self-reliant, independent, privileged American, and I was consistently blessed, amazed, and humbled by the grace and hospitality I was shown in a country known for poverty and suffering. Our opening hymn today communicates a sense of this word, ifadl. We sang, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. All meaning friend and stranger, German immigrants and Sudanese refugees, all meaning young and old, gay and straight, light-skinned and dark-skinned, speakers of different languages, all y'all. All are welcome. Because in that way, some have entertained angels without knowing it. And some have even welcomed the Lord. All are welcome because hospitality creates space between us for conversation, for learning, for the presence of God with us. Share hospitality with one another, scripture says, because Jesus is revealed in the breaking of bread and because welcoming one another offers a foretaste of the feast to come at God's kitchen table, table where strangers will gather as members of one family and we will celebrate the goodness of the Lord together forever. Jesus deals with issues of hospitality and welcome in our gospel for today. He has been invited to share the hospitality of a leader of the Pharisees and as the dinner party gets underway, Luke tells us, they were watching him closely. Jesus was famous, or maybe infamous, for his table fellowship. Jesus broke the bubble when it came to the company he was willing to keep. He ate with good church folk, he ate with community leaders, he ate with people he didn't always agree with, and he was particularly known for eating with sinners and outcasts. Given this reputation, it's little wonder they were watching him closely that night. And the funny thing about this story is that Jesus was also watching them. And here's the thing. What he saw was the antithesis of all are welcome. He saw jockeying for positions of power he saw striving to be close to those who might do you a favor. He saw deference to the powerful and disregard for those of lower rank and status. He saw the ancient equivalent of a high school lunchroom with cliques and the in crowd sitting together and others trying to figure out where they fit in. Jesus was watching all this quite closely and he also saw who was not there. It turns out that seeing who is not there is a Jesus kind of thing to do. An essential part of the kingdom etiquette Jesus practices and teaches. Jesus sees and Jesus notices who was absent from the table. And then Jesus says the kind of thing that might make a host think twice about inviting Jesus to dinner ever again. Jesus proposed an alternative dinner party etiquette. He proposed an alternative seating arrangement and he proposed an even bigger table. Jesus suggested that we set a table where all really are welcome, including those the world excludes. Jesus proposed a dinner party where the poor 
and the afflicted and those who cannot repay hospitality have a special invitation. He proposed a party where the host says to the lowly, to the outsider, to the newly arrived stranger, friend, come up higher because you are welcome here. Our hymn of the day today lays claim to this kingdom etiquette, to this it fuddle sense of hospitality set forth by Jesus in the gospel. You might want to take a look at the hymn of the day. We're going to sing it in a few minutes. We're going to sing, I'm going to eat at the welcome table. I'm going to eat at the welcome table one of these days. I don't know if anyone knows that hymn. It comes from the African-American spiritual tradition. And its roots are traced to that time in our country when there was strict, even brutal, separation between black and white, enslaved and free, servant and master. This hymn expresses the hope that someday, in this life or the next, those who are excluded now will be included then at God's welcome table of love and grace. This hymn about the welcome table was adapted in our time and it eventually became an anthem for the civil rights movement. It was especially relevant during the efforts to integrate Woolworth counters and tables where African Americans were not welcome to sit or eat. In the context of enslavement, in the context of the American Civil Rights Movement, and for anyone who has ever felt excluded, left out, left behind, singing, I'm going to eat at the welcome table, is a bold declaration of faith in God's promises. The version I know adds a bold word of praise to the mix, and you can too as we sing this celebratory song today. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. This song powerfully echoes the sense of today's gospel, where Jesus sets a big and inclusive welcome table, the kind of table that says, it fuddle. There is a place for you here. The welcome table set by Jesus is a table defined by love and mercy, not by power, not by status, not by social expectations. This welcome table is for insiders and outsiders, saints and sinners. At this table, hearts are lifted, souls are nourished, and lives are changed because Jesus is there. Jesus himself ate with sinners and nobodies. The poor and the afflicted and all sorts of folks who had no claim to fame, much less a place at the table. In his table fellowship and in his teaching, Jesus embodied and he shared the grace of God's love here and now on earth as it is in heaven. At his welcome table, he showed us God's kingdom here and now. Here in this place, as we welcome one another in Christ's name, as we eat and drink at God's table, we do it because here then we create space for grace and for the possibility of Christ's transforming presence and for the possibility of his blessing in our lives. In our worship together, sharing the bread and wine of Christ's presence at the Lord's table nourishes us and empowers us to go forth and do the same, to share our lives, to share our faith, to share our hospitality with one another and with strangers who cannot repay. As we worship and as we share meals through our feeding ministries, we extend the table. We practice kingdom etiquette. We make God's love real in bread and wine, in salads and sandwiches, in turkey and potatoes and chocolate chip cookies. And as we do these things, we become a living parable of God's kingdom. Today's scripture reminds us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. On the cross, Jesus opened wide his arms. And this is for us the ultimate sign of God's welcome, hospitality, and love, yesterday, today, and forever. 
With wide open arms, Jesus says, it fatal. With wide open arms, Jesus says, everyone I died for is welcome. With wide open arms, Jesus insists, you are welcome at God's table of love and grace. With wide open arms and with a heart overflowing with love, Jesus insists, there is a place for you here. Amen. Pastor Kate and I haven't seen each other for several weeks, and yet sometimes the Holy Spirit works. And I love the fact that she really focused on this hymn of the day that we're about to sing. Um, because when I came back and I'm looking at what I'm doing, I'm like, yes, I know we picked this. This is a great tune. I've got to find a prelude that goes with this. And if you were paying attention to the prelude, that's exactly what we did. So you've got a feel of what this hymn we're going to sing is like. And I would say uh, it is definitely not a Bach chorale type piece. It is a piece that we need to sing joyfully. If you read music, you're probably looking at it and going, okay, this could be rather boring, but there's a style called swing eights, and that's how we're going to sing it. If we were to do it just like it's written, it would sound rather... That doesn't sound fun, does it? No, not as fun. So, it's going to sound a little more like this. Now that's fun. So... What I want you all to do is not worry about what you're looking at note-wise, not worry about counting. Just sing this with all the joy uh, that you can muster. We're all here together today and have a great time with it. Let's stand to sing. Invited and gathered at God's welcome table, we are bold to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's extraordinary and welcoming love, 
Let us draw near to the Holy One in prayer, responding, merciful God, receive our prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. Uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops, and all who serve and teach your people here in this community, in our synod, and in the ELCA. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation and hospitality that reaches out as with the open arms of Christ. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverence and awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes and rivers, streams, forests and deserts. We ask in this season for a bountiful harvest in a celebration of the goodness of what you have given us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees, those in prison, all who are tortured or persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick, grieving, or in need this day. We pray for those on our prayer list and for Donna, Judy, Tina, Donna, the family and friends of Sophie Batiste, others we name aloud and in our hearts before you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children, teachers, and youth directors for a new year of learning. Bless our preschool. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all the saints who confessed your name, we give thanks, Holy One. May we with them cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, spoken and unspoken, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign and a word of Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. You may be seated as we bring our offering forward.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right from east to west, from north to south, in all the seasons of our life to give thanks and praise to you, O living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dwelling beyond time and space, you came to abide among us as the word made flesh. Embracing the world with your wide open arms of justice and love, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God we cannot see. And so with all the baptized of every race and land, with the multitudes in heaven and the countless choirs of angels, we praise your glorious name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread is broken, wine is poured, evil is red, it fuddle. We will commune as we do by side, beginning with the choir. There is grape juice in the center of the communion trays and gluten-free wafers are available.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have welcomed us to your table of love, and you have fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you. 